Is Paul ashamed of 1 Corinthians 8, verse 6? Okay, um, this verse right here is all you need to disprove the Trinity, God in three persons. Um, God, not God in three persons, that's easy to debunk because only Jesus Christ is the person of the Godhead. But God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So if you want to turn to 1 Corinthians 8, chapter 8, verse 6, and that's where we're going to start with this study. And I've been going through, doing my daily studies, uh, Bible reading, and God showed me something here. And then He showed me again, and over the past, you know, gosh, month, things, God just keeps showing me this over and over, I want to share it with you guys. And it hit me for a great title, it's like, is Paul... Ashamed of 1 Corinthians 8.6, because it just seems like these people that refuse to turn to the Godhead and stick with the Bible, they're ashamed of this verse. So let's read it real quick. Let's see if I got the right one. 8 verse 6. But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things and we in Him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, for whom are all things, and we by Him. Okay? Apostle Paul is saying this. Okay? And then he just say it like quietly, like off in the corner, you know, yeah, this is, this is kind of how it should be, and, and then that's it. You never hear it again. Well, let's turn to Romans 1, 7. Let's see how ashamed God, uh, Paul is, uh, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. So let's get over to Romans chapter 1, verse 7. Uh. Romans chapter 1, verse 7. Okay. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He acknowledges 1 Corinthians 8, 6 before it's even written. As far as, you know, in the Bible before it's written. You know, you have God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead and turn to 1 Corinthians 1, 3. 1 Corinthians 1, 3, he's writing to the church of Corinth. Okay. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord, capital L, Lord, Jesus Christ. There's but one God, the Father, one Lord, Jesus Christ. He's telling, he starts his greeting, not starts it, but it's in his greeting, that verse. There's only one God, the Father, God our Father. Okay. Go ahead and turn with me to 2 Corinthians 1 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Why these people um, that refused to believe in the Godhead. They say they do, but they refuse to use the terms in the Bible, words in the Bible. They replace the title for God, capital G, Godhead, for a title of a pagan God, Trinity. Okay. Why they do that? Because I believe that a lot of them are ashamed of 1 Corinthians 8, 6. They'll try to explain it away, or they'll try to ignore it like it doesn't exist. Did Paul do that? Let's go to Galatians chapter 1, verse 3. Galatians chapter 1, verse 3. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. He's writing to the people of Galatians. Uh, I don't, can't pronounce it right sometimes. But his greeting includes God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. What did 1 Corinthians 8, 6 say? One God, one Lord. One God, the Father, and one Lord, Jesus Christ. And we're really going to drive this home. I know it kind of seems like I might be going overboard a little bit, but I really want to drive this home to 
the brothers and sisters of Christ out there to stand for the true Godhead. Uh, stand for the fact that this Bible tells us there's one God, the Father. You cannot say Jesus is God and not the Father, because there's only one God. Either Jesus is God, or He's not God. And there's only one Lord, Jesus Christ. Let's see, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 2. Next book. Let's see. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. One God the Father, one Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, that's in 1 Corinthians 8, 6. Uh, Ephesians 4, 6. Um, I just have this parenthesis. Um, one God and Father of all. One God, and that God is the Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Okay, there's only one God, the Father. Let's go to Ephesians 6, 23. Oops, went too far. 6, 23. This is a closing to the, um, to the Ephesians. Peace be to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul knows and believes there's only one God, the Father, and one Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody who truly stands for the Godhead believes the same thing. Philippians 1, 2 might be on the same page. Chapter 1, verse 2. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to keep driving this home because why does it say from God our Father and from God the Son, Jesus Christ? Because there's only one God, the Father. You'll never ever find God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, like the word God before Jesus Christ or before the Holy Spirit. Okay? It's only God the Father. Philippians chapter 2, verse 11. Also, let's see, chapter 2, actually I do have to flip over. And that, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the Trinity people don't. Okay, uh, Jesus Christ is lowercase g, God the Son. Let's keep going and see. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Only one God, the Father. So did Paul believe this? So far it seems to be pretty evident that Paul believes this. Colossians 1, chapter 1, verse 2. Another greeting. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ which are at Colossus. I can't pronounce that sometimes. Coloss, see? Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. And we're going to read to number three too. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ praying always for you. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is the Father. Capital G, God is always the Father. People always get on to me saying, why do you keep saying that? Every time it says God, capital G, you keep saying it's always the Father. The Bible says it is. There's only one God, capital G, the Father. Not God's lowercase g, plural. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1. Get over to 1 Thessalonians. Thessalonians. And here we are. Verse 1, or chapter 1, verse 1. Paul and Silvanus and Timothy unto the church of Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, over and over and over, do you think people... Uh, I'm trying to keep from being, I'm not trying to upset anybody out there. I'm hoping that people, their hearts will be open to the truth. You want to stand for the Godhead. 
You want to not be ashamed of 1 Corinthians 8, 6. You don't want to dismiss it. You don't want to act like it's just something really small. It doesn't really mean anything. Or it's not that important. It is very important. Go to 2 Thessalonians 1, 2. Second letter to the Thessalonians. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, never God the Father and God the Son. God the Father and God Jesus Christ. The word God before Jesus Christ. Okay, when you say Jesus is God, you're saying He's the Father. There's only one God, the Father. Okay. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2. Another greeting. Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. I hope it's really sinking in by now that Paul was not ashamed of 1 Corinthians 8.6. He was not ashamed that there's only one God, capital G God, the Father, and one Lord, Jesus Christ. But we're looking for 2 Timothy 1, chapter 1, verse 2. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Right there. Titus 1, chapter 4. Or, Titus. <laughs> Titus chapter 1, 4. I'm doing this kind of late at night, so please bear with me. Titus chapter 1, verse 4. See, that's Timothy, Titus chapter 1, verse 4. Okay. To Titus, my own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. Okay. And one more, Philemon 1, verse 3. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Was Paul ashamed of 1 Corinthians 8, chapter 8, verse 6? Was Paul ashamed that there's only one God, capital G God, the Father, and only one Lord, capital L, Lord Jesus Christ? He was not. But guess what else I found? What about Peter? Hmm. Was Peter ashamed? Is this just something that only Paul taught and only Paul knew and Peter didn't? Let's look at 1 Peter 1, verse 3. Let's turn to 1 Peter. First Peter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope for the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. God and Father. God is the Father. And people say, well, that's kind of weak. Okay. Second Peter 1, 16. Let's go to Second Peter 1, 16. 2 Peter 1.16 For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were made eyewitness of His Majesty. Capital L, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, God and Father. God is the Father. Okay. Peter believed this. Okay. He's not ashamed of the fact that there's only one God, and that God is the Father. That there's one Lord, capital L-O-R-D, Lord, Jesus Christ. And guess what? When I'm doing my studies, I realized, what about John? Was John ashamed? Let's go to John, 2 John verse 1, or chapter 1, verse 3. So we want 2 John... Well, there's only one chapter in 2 John. 1, 3. 
Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the, Fa of the Father, in truth and love. Capital G, God the Father, capital L, Lord Jesus Christ. You mean to tell me John was not ashamed that there's only one God, capital G, God, and that God is the Father? Not lowercase g God the Son, not lowercase g God the Holy Spirit, and the three or three lesser gods make up one big God. No, they weren't ashamed that there was only one capital G God, the Father. And yes, God showed me one more person that wasn't ashamed. Okay, let's see. Turn to Jude. Okay, Jude one one. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Okay. God the Father, capital G, God. These men were not ashamed of the Godhead. They were not ashamed that there is only one capital G, God, and that is the Father. So brothers and sisters in Christ, don't let people get you to be ashamed on the true Godhead, that there's only one God, the Father. And you cannot say Jesus is God and then turn around and say He's not the Father. If He's not the Father, He's not God. And if He's not God, His blood could do nothing for you on Calvary. So, and if you're out there and you're still struggling with using terms, of the Trinity, and it might be pride, it might be you're holding on to traditions of men, I plead with you and implore you to turn back to the Godhead. Do not turn your back on the Godhead, and don't let them fool you into believing, well, I'm not turning my back on the Godhead. Trinity means the same thing. It does not mean the same thing. It's like me saying, well, you know, the Bible says his name is Jesus, but I think we should call him Billy Joe Bob. I mean, it's basically the same thing. No, it isn't. They're changing a title for God, capital G, Godhead, for a title for a pagan Catholic God, the Trinity. Stand for absolute truth. Be courageous, but more importantly, be like Paul, Peter, John, Jude. Don't be ashamed that there's only one capital G, God, the Father. Don't be ashamed of it. Stand firm. Stand for the Word of God. We're getting closer and closer uh, to the catching away of the body of Christ. The Bible Word is caught up. And I look for that day where we all get to be together with Jesus Christ. So I love you guys, brothers and sisters in Christ out there. I'm praying for you, for you know temptations, uh, struggles with the struggles with the flesh, temptations, the struggles with lost family members, the lost world. Um, struggles with false converts, um, the flesh fighting you when you're trying to read and study. I'm just, I'm praying for you, your health. I'm praying for all of you brothers and sisters of Christ out there. Please keep me in your prayer and keep the rest of the body of Christ in prayer. Um, time is, is, is getting short. Uh, I don't know if, I don't think we're going to be here by the end of the year. If we are, then it's by God's grace because there's still somebody that needs to get saved. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.